is filled your glory has to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Good morning, good morning. May the blessing of the Lord be upon each and every one of you this morning. And we welcome you to our Lord's Day, Sunday worship. We're still here at home, uh, just trying to stay away from bad weather systems. And hopefully, hopefully next week, We'll avoid another storm, although they say another storm is on its way. And uh, we've been having a storm for over a year, so none of that ever stops us. But we welcome you to Circle of Christ Church. I'm Pastor Sam. For those of you who might be visiting us for the very first time, we're here every Sunday at 11 o'clock. Uh, sometimes I'm here in my home studio, and other times I'm in the sanctuary at 147 Drys the Loop. And hopefully uh, by the end of this month or the beginning of March, we'll be back with in-person services, the Lord willing. So today is the 14th of September, and our, of September, February. <laughs> I'm trying to get I'm trying to get past February, <laughs> the 14th uh, of February, <laughs> and it's uh, the world celebrates. Well, our nation celebrates uh, Friendship Day. It's sometimes called Saint Valentine's Day, 
And, uh, and it's, it's a way of celebrating friendship, love, romance, and, and all of those wonderful things that bring people together. And so we wish you all a beautiful day of love. If you're alone, you're never alone. If you have Jesus in your heart, right? And, uh, and so we welcome you this morning. We, uh, we hope that you share this service, so put, put a share on it and put it on your homepage, and that way folks can, uh, can experience uh, our, uh, our services. And I'm accompanied here by my, my wife, Esther, on the piano. My son, Joseph, is uh, our tech, and... Rosita's working this morning. She had to go to work. And Kaylin is getting ready for her children's church. So uh, she's in another room. That way she can log in and enjoy uh, our children's church service. Amen. Let us pray and ask the Lord's blessing. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor of coming to your people by means of this platform known as Facebook Live and then eventually YouTube. And also, oh God, on our website, oh God, we ask you, oh God, that your blessing, the anointing of your Holy Spirit would be upon us, that we would sense healing flow, and ministry flow, and encouragement flow. Lord, that miracles might transpire as we worship and glorify your name. We've come with one purpose, and that's to glorify your name, whether by song, prayer, scripture reading, intercessions. Lord, the preaching of the gospel, we ask you, God, that you minister like only you can. I thank you, Lord, for all of your benefits to us, O God. And we pray, O oh Lord, that in the precious name of Jesus, you would be with us this morning. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's turn to Psalm 103. One of those great, great psalms. Amen. Amen. El Salmo 103, Psalm 103, amen. We give reading to this psalm in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives us all our iniquities, and who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and mercy. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, 
So the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him, for he knows our frame. He remembers we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love, the great mercy of the Lord, is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise God. Que el Señor bendiga la lectura de su santa palabra. May the Lord bless you.
al Dios de amor. Waka the session bringing us redemption that is the day of night not one faint hope inside God gracious tender laid aside his splendor stooping to to win to save my soul oh how I love it how I adore breath, my sunshine, my all in all, the great creator became my savior, and all his full Well, in Qué gran misterio, tan incomprensible, que el verbo se encarnó y al mundo te El plan oculto reveló si al hombre y por su diel no amor se le va todo. Oh, cuánto lía. Cuida mi vida, mi redentor, el rey de gloria vino a salvarme y a Oh, how I love you, how I adore you, my breath, my sunshine, my all in all. The great creator became my savior, and all God's fullness dwelleth in him. Oh, Bless his name forever. How I adore him. My breath, my sunshine, my all in all. The great creator became my 
and blood his substance he took the form of a man revealed his hidden plan oh glorious mystery sacrifice of Calvary and now I know Thou art the great I am. Oh, how I love Him, I love Him, I love Him. Oh, how I adore Him. My breath, my sunshine, my all in all, the great creator became my savior and all God's sunshine, God's fullness dwelleth in me. Quanto li amo, li amo, li adoro, oh, li adoro. Cuida mi vida, mi redentor, de gloria. Vino a 
salvarme y a Te amo más 
más que nunca I love you now more than don't have the names of those that are on, but we welcome you. God bless you. And uh, we pray that if there's anyone who's on for the very first time, that they'll feel welcome. Again, my name is Pastor Sam Colon from Circle of Christ Church in Co-op City, 147 Drives the Loop, the lower patio level. There with the former... Oh, oh yes. I'm also Esther's husband. <laughs> She's in a good mood. Praise the Lord. Amen. And um, we welcome you for the very first time, if you're visiting us for the first time. For those of you who come on regularly, we pray that this day will be a great blessing to you and that you will receive that anointing, and that, that, that sense of love, you know. Some people don't have a valentine, you know, and... Uh, well, we, we who are believers always have a valentine because before, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. His, there's no greater love than the love that God demonstrated for us by giving us his son. And uh, it is an awesome gift because it has repercussions not only in this life, but in the life to come. Eternal life, praise his name. At this time, we, we invite you to prepare to worship the Lord with your offerings. And if Joseph would be kind enough to put the, um, the slides, uh, just a reminder that uh, as a church, although we, we stopped having in-person services for the month of February, our plan is to get right back and open again, uh, if not the end of February, then at the beginning of March, Lord willing, and, and things are, are looking a little bit better. The, the crazy um, amount of pandemic that was um, uh, took us to levels that like never before it was probably due to the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. And so we, we encourage people to avoid traveling to avoid airports to avoid uh, things that uh, unless you really have to and if you do then double mask they're finding that double and if you choose to triple your mask then and of course social distancing is still highly recommended and uh, you know hand sanitizing and and things of that nature and avoiding uh, crowds indoor crowds uh uh, can be really, really dangerous. And so we encourage you to do that. But hopefully by the uh, beginning of March, we'll be back. And But that doesn't mean that the church isn't active. We're still preaching the gospel, giving out uh, the word of God through our communities and also uh, through our uh, the facilities that we have. We have Zoom, we have Google Meet, we have Facebook Live, we have YouTube Live, we have elders and teachers in the church that are doing small groups. I'm looking for someone to do a small uh, Spanish group, and so if one of our uh, leaders will do a small Spanish group on Zoom, that would be excellent. Uh, all of our groups, we have groups with children. Right now, the children are celebrating uh, children's church and uh, and uh, they do a great time uh, as a matter of fact they invite their friends so we have children um, from uh, who are from different neighborhoods who are friends of the children from our church who are coming on to Facebook live and the children have their own page on on, on Facebook also um, 
we invite you to, to join our uh, teens group. It's called Operation Grace. They gather together on Fridays. And uh, also our young adult uh, group. Um, and also the men's group, married couples group, women's group. There's a special group studying the Holy Spirit. And, and so there, there are a variety of Zoom groups uh, operating out there. And if you, if you have a Gmail and you still find a Zoom difficult to manage, well, Google Meet is really easy. I mean, the kindergartners do Google Meet. So, and it's just as good as Zoom and uh, probably easier to manage. So uh, uh, please find a way to gather. And of course, we're on every week. Uh, um, Monday's the only day we don't have uh, a, a public one on Facebook. Well, Mondays we have our prayer time with the leaders, our Zoom prayer time. And if you're a leader and you're listening to us and you haven't joined us in a while, hey, make that time to come and pray with Pastor Sam. I'm praying with all of our leaders and we get to discuss, you know, our future plans and and we have some really amazing things that God wants us to do. And I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it because God calls us to do it. Whatever God calls us to do, he facilitates it. And we're looking forward to great things. In the midst of the pandemic, the church is going forward. We never retreat. We always go forward. Praise God. And then on Tuesday morning, I do a devotional. I've been doing a devotional at 11 o'clock every Tuesday morning. And uh, we're studying and, and embarking upon um, how to fulfill the greatest commandment, how to know God through Jesus Christ, and how do we experience transformation. And uh, we're using a, a tremendous book by James Bryan Smith called The Good and Beautiful God. And uh, you don't have to buy it. You just come on Tuesday morning, and I break it down and share it with you all. And then we do the same thing on Tuesday, um, on, on Wednesday morning, and on, on Thursday morning. The only situation that we have is this week. This week we have a funeral in the morning on Tuesday and a burial in the morning on Wednesday. So my whole week has been interrupted, but then we'll get back to it eventually. And, uh, and hopefully on Thursday we'll be able to be on and try to catch up. In the evenings, on Tuesday evening, we have... Uh, we alternate between um, the Diaz sisters who do Spanish uh, worship and also they bring the word of God. And uh, sometimes they'll have Pastor Jean and Pastor Alina minister in Spanish and in English on Tuesday evening. I think this, e this Tuesday evening might be the worship team. And uh, so that's always great. And the worship team ministers and shares and they also sing. So that's a real treat. And, um, and then on Wednesday night, we have our regular uh, Bible study. This past Wednesday, they started an introduction on the book of Romans. And you just missed the intro, and you could always catch it on, on Facebook or on YouTube. And again, this next Wednesday, they continue uh, with Brother Darby Paris, Mitch Weber. And this past Wednesday, we had Pastor Rick Valdejo joining them. So you have three amazing and good teachers who uh, will break down the book of Romans for you. Amen. And then on Thursday night, uh, it, it's, uh, it's uh, different ministries might be on. And I think this Thursday, the children's ministry, I suppose, I'm not sure on that, but I believe that they will be. Mar Maribel will be doing a children's lesson for our kids. So the adults... We're inviting all of the adults, their parents, their aunties, their big brothers, their big sisters, um, to help the kids come on. It'll be on Zoom and Facebook at the same time. They figured out a way to do that, and that's fantastic. And Because the kids are used to Zoom, they know how to get on. As a matter of fact, they're on right now. And, uh, and, uh, and you get a chance to see our children's teachers um, do a lesson and you'll be blessed by it. So uh, make sure your kids are on uh, this Thursday. And then uh, Thursday during the day, during the day, uh, I'm on in the early morning at 11. And then at 1230, 
Pastor Raul is on with Brother Darby doing a Spanish Bible study. And then Friday at 1.30, we have our Spanish service. I did it from here this past Friday, and, and I think I'll do it again from here this coming Friday. So uh, last Friday and this Friday, I'll be the preacher for the Spanish uh, service, and, uh, and then Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. So that's our, that's our lineup, and, uh, and if you are able to give, um, Joey, did you put all those? Yeah, he's, he, he's usually on time doing all these things. Thank you, Joseph. Um, you can give to the church through the online portal on the website uh, and or mail in as the Lord leads you. And so we thank God for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, yes. Uh, let's worship the Lord one more time. Yes. I think, um, I think, I don't know. I don't know if it's too high. And it's... Come and bless the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Let his glory rise. In our praises Come and bless the Lord He's worthy to be praised Let His glory rise In our praises Let us wait on God He's worthy to be praised Everybody, let his glory rise in our praises. Let us wait on God, yes. Let us wait on God. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Let his glory rise. Let his glory rise in our praises. And I Bless the Lord. I will sing His praises, and He is worthy to be praised. Let His glory rise. God is here. Bless his holy name forever. God, God is here. And let his glory rise in our praise. Yeah. the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Let his glory rise in our praises. Come and bless the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Let his glory rise Let us wait on God. He's worthy to be praised. Let his glory rise in our praises. Oh, let us wait on God. You know he's worthy to be praised. Let his glory rise. Bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will sing his praises. He, he 
He's worthy to be praised. Come on. Let his glory rise in our praises. Oh, I will bless the Lord. Yes, I will. I will sing his praises. And he is worthy to be praised. Let his glory rise. Take it, Esther. Yeah. 
sing his praises and he He's worthy to be praised. Let his glory rise in our praise. As Esther continues to worship on the piano, we turn to our time of intercession for those that are in need. A lot of folks who need salvation, a lot of folks who need healing. Amen. We continue to pray for our dear and beloved Sister Cookie, Minelva Cookie Quinones. We heard last night that she was transferred out of ICU. That's a good, good thing. She's back on oncology. She's, she's fighting the good fight against leukemia. That she was unfortunately attacked by the COVID and it almost took her. But the Lord revived her and gave her back to us, and we're going to continue to believe for her complete healing in Jesus' name. And we pray for the doctors and the nurses who treat her, that they will be led of the Lord. Amen. We continue to pray for um, for uh, Esther Neal. Uh, these treatments that they're giving her will be successful. I also got word from our officer, NYPD patrolman Enzo, that he's um, finally feeling like himself after battling a very strong battle with the coronavirus. It almost knocked him out. But he's He's feeling so much better. We thank God and we thank you for your prayers. We pray for Erica Verdejo. She is Pastor Rick's sister. She has both cancer and COVID. And so we're trusting God for her healing. We pray for Justo Diaz, who doesn't know the Lord. He hasn't made a decision for the Lord, but he, he had enough sense to ask for prayer. He's battling COVID. Pray for Cristal, dear sister who's young and has a child, and, and she's battling a very, very strong cancer that has spread. Believing God for a miracle healing for her. Pray for our missionary, Valerie Rivera. Pray for all our missionaries, but especially for Valerie and Chrissy in Peru and Lima. Things are pretty bad in Peru, and uh, they have a family that didn't have a place to stay, and they, they opened up uh, the top floor of the sanctuary, and that family, they all have the COVID, so we're praying that our missionaries will be protected. Pray for an adopted daughter of our pastor, Alina. Her name is Jomari. And Jomari's family in the Republic, the Dominican Republic, has been smitten by the coronavirus. Has uh, multiple multiple family members that have died, and she has um, two brothers, a nephew, and an uncle that are fighting the coronavirus. We're also praying for our sister Denise Smith was in need of an electric wheelchair. We pray that God will provide one for her so she can get out and about. We pray for an Alex Silva who needs Jesus. He's fought cancer and COVID. May the Lord heal him, 
physically and spiritually. We pray for Nalia Diaz Solano's mother-in-law. Nalia is Sasha's sister who accompanies her on Tuesday nights. Her mother-in-law Elsa has coronavirus and we're praying that her father does that her father-in-law does not get it. That's Elsa and Pedro Solano. Last night uh, we did a service, not on Facebook Live. It was a it was a private um, memorial service for my family. We led it from here. Uh, some of you know that my oldest sister and her husband passed away at the beginning of the year. And so last night we were able to get on together after a little difficulties technology-wise. I think we had over, I don't know, about 35, maybe 40 family members came on the Zoom. And of course the siblings and the closest ones all shared. And we celebrated the life of Lucilenia and Israel Taisha. I thank you all for your prayers for my family. And we pray for our nation. We pray that this, um, this vaccine will work. I know in some cases it doesn't keep you from getting the flu, but hopefully it'll keep you from getting it so strong that it might end up hospitalizing you. This past Friday, I got my first shot right here. No pain, no nothing, no marks, no nothing. It was my first one, I got the Moderna, and um, my next shot will be in a month. And, uh, you know, everyone has to make their own personal decision. I, all the vaccinations that I've ever had in my life, I've never had a reaction, and this one was no different. No reactions whatsoever. And so maybe I'm just one of those fortunate ones. Uh, one of the brothers in the church had a little bit of a reaction. and had a swollenness in, in his arm where they injected it and um, some fatigue. So they say the second shot will produce a result because the body already knows what this thing is. And as soon as it comes in, it attacks it. And, and so you might feel... You might feel queasy, you might feel headaches, but it's passing and it's, it's well worth, uh, it's well worth getting the vaccine as long as your doctor says it's okay and, and you have the faith to take it and take it because it's one way of slowing down this, this, um, this pandemic. And uh, they seem to be producing them. Finally, we got enough so that folks here in Connecticut could get shots. And uh, I know they had run out in New York and they're rushing to produce more and more. And so we pray that this will change the circumstances so that we can open up businesses. We have people who are suffering because their jobs have closed down and have no employment and they don't have any help. We're praying that help will come soon. Our help comes from the Lord. And so we have many things to pray for, amen? Let us pray. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we come to you right now, Lord, thanking you, Father, for hearing our cry. We thank you for ministering to Cookie Quinones and getting her out of there. Uh, and into the oncology ward so that they can continue treating her leukemia. We pray that the treatment will be effective and give her supernatural strength to beat this cancer in Jesus' name. We pray for our sisters Esther, Neil, and Cristal. We pray for Denise Smith, they're in need, they're in need. Some of them have physical needs, they need healing from COVID or cancer 
or they need provision like an electric wheelchair. We pray for Yomari's family in the Dominican Republic, oh God. Two brothers, her nephew, her uncle, in the name of Jesus. Pray for our missionaries, Valerie Rivera, Chrissy. We pray for Pastor Moises Bedoya. We pray for Pastor Justin Colon in the Love Kitchen, La Cocina del Amor in Bayamón. We pray, O oh God, for all of our relatives in Puerto Rico. My in-laws, O oh God, keep them, protect them, O oh God. We pray for those in the Dominican Republic, in Cuba, in Jamaica, and all of these islands, O oh God, that have less resources than we do. And so we pray your provision for them. We pray for Alex Silva, that you save him. We pray for Justo Diaz, that you save him and that you heal them. We pray for Joey Rosario's mom, Alicia Guzman, as she's recovering not only from surgery, but also from the loss of her husband. We pray in the name of Jesus for our missionary Mina to Guyana that you will provide for her every need. Now, Lord, as we look forward to going into your word, we pray the anointing that makes preaching easy. Prepare our hearts and our ears to receive your word and strengthen us, O oh God. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So last week we started a series. We didn't finish it. We started a series about our union, the doctrine of the union in Christ. And uh, we started out, uh, the title of last week's message were, We Are God's Children Now. Somos hijos de Dios ahora, now. And uh, we got that right from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And so, so as to summarize last week, so that we can then embark upon this week's message, which is built upon it, uh, the Word of God says, see what kind of love the Father has given to us. On this weekend of love, there is no greater love than the love of God. And John says, see, see, open your eyes. Uh, get alert, you know, stop complaining that you don't have a date. Uh, you have a date with God right now. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God, and so we are. And here's the great part about how great this love is. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, verse 2, beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. So we are God's children even though we haven't been entirely and completely sanctified. There are areas in our lives that are not right. And there are areas in our lives that we're kind of lazy on and and our prayers and our Bible study and our, our disciplines have not been uh, effectively practiced day in and day out. And we fail the Lord. But he says we're still God's children now. Because it does not yet, uh, uh, it says, and what, will, what we will be has not yet appeared. What we'll be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, Jesus appears. And that's in the second coming. We shall be like him. So something happens when the Lord descends. Something supernatural happens. We are changed in nature. And we receive a new body. Because we shall see him as he is. And right next to it I have the Spanish version. So we read that last week. And we talked of Somos los hijos de Dios ahora. Amado, ahora somos hijos de Dios y aún no se ha manifestado lo que hemos de ser, pero sabemos que cuando Él se manifieste, seremos semejantes a Él, porque le veremos tal como Él es. Something's going to happen when we see Jesus. When we see Jesus, something miraculous will happen to those who have placed their faith on Him. Well, well, so we are going to continue... With our union with Christ, we built on the doctrine of the union with Christ last week, and we talked about three or four different ways. We are unified with the Father, we are unified with the Son, we are unified 
with the Holy Spirit and we're unified with each other, the body of Christ must be united. God is into union. The devil is into division. God is into multiplication and he's into uniting. And so in the part two of this, the doctrine of the union with Christ, number one, our union with Christ is likened to marriage. How can we become one? Well, we are like the, 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 the metaphor that it uses and the paradigm that it describes is that of marriage. And that's found in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29 through 32. Open your Bibles to it. If not, then take a look. I hope Joey has it on the slides. We have it there. Okay, great. It says, for no one has ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it. We take baths, we brush our teeth, we get up, we put on clean clothing, and we eat, we exercise. When something's not working well, we'll go to the doctor because we take care of our bodies. It says, for no one has a, hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. In the same manner, Christ nourishes and cherishes the church. The church belongs to Jesus, and Jesus loves the church. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. So here, he, because we are members of his body, I'm sorry, I skipped something very important. And it says, just as Christ does nourish and love and cherish the church. And then it ex explains the because, the why. Because we are members of his body. Every believer is a member of Christ's body. And Jesus takes care of his body. And when something's wrong in his body, he corrects it. And he, gets, and he takes care of it. So that's why he allows us to go through trials and temptations. Because there are his ways of fixing our lives. And he says... Uh, and he says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. This is the command that God gave Adam. God told Adam and the children of Adam and the sons of Adam that they were to leave Papa and Mama and cleave and unite and become one with their wives. And so he's using the analogy of marriage. And they become one in the intimacy in the intimacy, in this case, it's a physical intimacy. The sexual, um, the sexual act becomes a spiritual act when you're married. If you do it outside of marriage, it is spiritual, but it is spiritual on the negative side. It is negatively spiritually affecting you. It is evil. It is sinful before God to practice marriage outside practice sex outside of marriage but in marriage it does something powerfully and spiritual and that is when a husband loves his wife and a wife loves her husband and they have intimacy they become closer and so uh, the bible teaches us that in the same way we are united with god when we have intimacy with him and how do we have intimacy with him when we are united with him in all of his experiences? Now, God, through his son, went to the cross. When we're united with Jesus to the cross, we are experiencing intimacy. When we cry in the midst of temptation and we cry out, God, help me, we are being intimate with Jesus. He cried out. The temptation was, and they were yelling at him and said, if you're the son of God, call the angels from heaven and, 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 and get all these knuckleheads here crying out that you should be crucified. Swallow them up, you know, open the earth and swallow them up and, and kill them. And he could have done that. But he resisted that temptation because the purpose of his death was not to destroy man, but to redeem him. Love is the key motivation in everything we do. And he says, therefore, as a man leaves his father and mother and holds fast to his wife, holds fast means he holds strongly. He doesn't let her go. Marriage is forever. It's intended to be a spiritual act. And the two shall become one flesh so that God no longer discerns and he no longer looks at us as separate individuals. 
I and Esther are one. And so because of that, if we're not, if we're not united, then our prayers are hindered. That's what Peter says. Our prayers are hindered because I'm pulling one way and she's pulling another way. That's why unity is essential for the move of God. You want to see a move of God in your church? Stop bickering. Stop having all kinds of tension between each other and get united. Have one same purpose. And then he says, this mystery is profound. And it is profound because we're talking about comparing what a man and a woman do when they're married to what God is doing with the church. He's becoming one with us and we're becoming one with him. And that's a profound mystery because one is metaphorically stated and the other one is actually done in, in all physicality. The mystery is profound and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. So he's talking about this oneness is referring to Christ and the church. We are one with Christ. And we read that last week. Whoever is united with Christ is one with his spirit. So we are united with Christ through the Holy Spirit. All right? And then uh, the second thing we see is that our union with Christ is vital. Vital means it's essential for maintaining spiritual health. If we are spiritually weak, it means that we're not having intimacy with Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 11 says, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. If you're actively sinning, then your intimacy with Jesus is broken. And so uh, what he's saying is, you, you have to consider yourself dead to sin. Like, I can't sin with my hands, my eyes, my mouth. Why? Because a dead people don't do things like that. Dead people don't speak. Dead people don't walk. So he's saying, consider yourself dead to sin, but alive to God. That means do the things that God would want you to do in Christ Jesus. And so our union with Christ is vital so that we are able to work for God. I cannot do the work of God unless I have intimacy with Jesus Christ. It is my intimacy with Jesus Christ that led to some of the phone calls that I got this week. This week I got two phone calls that really pumped me up. And, and they look like we're going to bring new ministries to our church and, and, and take our church into a, a higher dimension in the knowledge of the word and, and offer our churches even greater opportunities to grow spiritually. And, uh, and I've shared it with just a few of the leaders of the church. Some of the other ones are waiting. I haven't met with them yet since that. I had a phone call as recently as this Friday, so I haven't had time to share it with them. But between me and the Lord, and Elder Nancy knows about it, uh, we know that God is, is fermenting in our church a new move. And it's because we are praying. Every Monday, all the leaders are praying. Now, not all, all the leaders are on. Sometimes some of them work late and they can't come on. But as often as they can, we get at least 20 leaders to join in on a Zoom prayer. And we are praying God's will in our church. I'm asking God to put me to the side and just take over the church and, and, and just lead the church, lead the church. And I'm seeing God is building different leaders up. People are rising to the occasion. Now, some people are not. Some people are falling off to the wayside. And I warn you, if you fall off to the wayside, you stay behind. And some, some are going to other churches, and they will go to other churches because they want, you know, they want spectator Christianity. They want a Christianity where they could just sit down and receive. And I'm anti that. I'm, I'm telling you, it's time for you to get busy. We heard it through Othniel Smith's sermon a few weeks back. You must find your purpose. Your purpose is what's going to bring victory in your life. So union with Christ is essential and vital in us finding, for us to find our calling, our gifting, our gift mix. Amen? And in Philippians 1.21 Paul said it, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. There's no in-between. There's no vacations in God. Even when you're on vacation, you're on duty. I was talking to a police officer this Friday 
I was counseling an NYPD and I said, I, you know, I, I asked him some questions like, what do you do when you're off duty? And his answer to me is, I'm never off duty. And that was a great answer. He's never off duty. Even though he's not on the clock getting paid, if he sees a crime, he has to respond one way or another. Now, he's a detective, so he may not intervene because it'll blow his cover, but he'll radio it in, he'll call it in, and other foot officers will show up to the situation and they have his testimony. What does that mean? It means that we have to be ready in season and out of season. If next week something happens and I can't preach, there's got to be a preacher ready. And, and even if you're not ready, you got to be ready to get before the mic and proclaim the word of the Lord. How does that happen? With your union with Christ. Every day you're talking to him. Every day you're reading the Bible. Every day you're studying and seeking a word from him. And he will give it to you. He will. All right? And then we see number three is our union with Christ is a new beginning. God, when we are united with Christ, the past is the past. Don't go living in your past. Well, that's what happened when I wasn't serving the Lord. Whatever happened when you weren't serving the Lord is under the blood. Jesus is not interested in going back into your past and reminding you of your failures. He's interested in going back into your past and healing you from that failure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so our union with Christ is a new beginning. Look at what 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. And I love it. I, I think we should all be, you know, 5.17 Christians. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Every day, God has something new for his people. Being united with Christ is an adventure because Christ is working 24-7. Man, I got a call, and, and then when I got the call, I found out that uh, another call was, was had, and they mentioned me and the ministry of our church in the call, and an agency said, hey, well, if they're willing, we, they can join with us, and we could do this service for the community. And I can't get ahead of myself because sometimes I do and the devil hears me and I don't want him messing with this. But I got calls, uh, you know, our testimony, our reputation in our community has grown. And people know that we're not a church like the average church. People know we're always active. People know that we're always giving out things. People know that we're always doing something for the kids, for the adults. And, and so we get calls, and in their calls say, hey, we can give you this if you do that. Hey, we can give you this if you do that. Hey, we can give you this if you do that. And all of that is the Holy Spirit opening doors. Why? Because when you're united with Christ, when you're seeking his face, he gives you new beginnings. He gives you new opportunities to serve him. In Philippians 3, 8 through 11, it says, this is what Paul says, indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. He considered, now this is a man who had an excellent education. He was a student of Gamaliel, who was the greatest Torah teacher in Jerusalem. And his father had to pay that mentor ma a lot of money to get Paul to become an expert in the Old Testament law. And he studied under the greatest mind of that day. And he says, I counted all of that loss for the excellency, the, the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ. In other words, learning Jesus was more important than understanding 613 commandments in the Torah. And so he, for this, and then he asked, for his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, as garbage. And, and the actual word there is dung, is dung, which is feces. So he, he gets really down and dirty and smelly. He say, I count all of my accomplishments. He's a Roman citizen. He speaks multiple languages. He's an expert in the Torah. He's an officer of the Sanhedrin. He is a persecutor of the church. He has authorization to arrest and, and kill people authorized by Rome through the temple. And yet he says, I count all of that as garbage, as feces, as dung, compared to the suffering, uh, 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 to, to, to the knowledge, right, that I may gain Christ. 
that I might gain Christ. Christ is more important than political influence. Christ is more important than your stature in the community, than your reputation in the community. Christ is more important, and that's what he said. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. And be found in him. It's more important to gain Christ and be found in him. You have to be united in Christ where you are in Christ, and Christ is in you. We learned that last week, right? Not having a form of righteousness uh, on my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ Jesus. He says, we don't want the righteousness that comes from trying to keep the law because the fact of the matter is that no man can keep the law. Rather, I want the righteousness that comes from my faithfulness to following Jesus. The righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I love this, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection of the dead. I want so badly to pass through death and experience the, 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 the resurrection from the dead that I'm willing to leave all things that I consider important, even if it means suffering the death of a cross suffering and these were not just words he actually lived these words about 10 years later after he wrote this book he's actually decapitated by Nero in Rome so this is not just words someone hyping up this is his testimony number three our union with Christ is communal when we are together with what's going on right now, if you're, if you're at home, I don't know if Olga's on, is Olga on? Olga's usually on with Joe and sometimes her son, Joey Batts, and, and his wife uh, are on together. Uh, Maribel might be on with her husband or with her grandchildren, right? Um, Elder Nancy might be on with, with Jose Rosario, her dad, and her son, Andres. Um, Elder J might be on with Sister Jeannie and maybe her, uh, 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 his mom and, 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 and Jeannie's dad. Our union with Christ does depend on our community. When we are divided with each other, we divide Christ. This is Galatians 3.28, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So we're not separated by gender, we're not separated by political status, and we're not separated by ethnic background. Race, ethnic background, language, culture, education, gender does not separate us. We are one body in Christ Jesus. What brings us together is faith in Jesus Christ. By being united in Christ, we could have a multi- cultural diverse congregation amen and and then ephesians 2 18 through 22 it says for through him through jesus we both have access in one spirit to the father through jesus when we receive Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes into us, and the Holy Spirit gives us access to the Father. So we are in the Father, we are in the Son, and we are in the Spirit. That's why if he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Why? Because we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in us. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him also you are being built together with dwelling place for God by the Spirit of God. What is this saying? This is saying that we are one even though we're different. Each, each wall in this house is different. One wall is very large, another wall is short. The, the, the frame around the, 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 the door is, is, is much thinner 
uh, uh, than, than the main wall that separates one apartment from another. Th these walls, this wall right behind me, has there's two walls there. There's the wall here, there's insulation and soundproofing, and then there's another wall behind it so that the people next door don't hear me yelling and I don't hear them yelling. Why? Because there's two walls and insulation in between. So what he's saying is, we are all different. Some of you are insulation. Some of you are doorknobs. Some of you are, are, are windows. Some of you are major pillars. Others of you are major walls. Some of you are roofs. Some of you are, are, are floor planks. All of us are different, but we are one house. We are one apartment. And that's why Paul is saying, hey, we are united when we come together and each one has a different gift, but when we put it all together and serve Jesus Christ, we are one body. Let me tell you, we need more unity, more unity. And part of this pandemic, part of this pandemic has happened to produce more unity. Those who are on are on every week. I have a group of people that come on every week, almost every service that I do on Facebook, they are on. There's another group that watches everything on YouTube and they answer and they write to us. Hey folks, everyone has an opportunity to gather together one way or another, all right? And in Galatians 1.22 it says, and I was still unknown in person to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. He's saying they didn't know him yet, but he was part of them. That he hadn't yet reached Galatia, but they had already heard about him through Barnabas. Barnabas said, hey, I'm going to get a, a, a great teacher. I'm going to get a great teacher. He's coming. They don't know him from anywhere, but he was being made known because of his obedience and his submission. There goes a spiritual discipline that many Christians have a hard time uh, doing, and that is obedience and submission. To submit to your pastor, to submit to the assistant pastor, to submit to your youth leader, to submit to, the, to whoever's coordinating something that is authorized by the pastor, that person is the authority. When you learn to submit, then you learn, then people will know that you are intimate, you are united with Christ. People who are not united with Christ don't submit and don't unite. People who are united with Christ find ways to connect because we can do more together than we can do separate. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 1, Paul writes to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. He said the whole church was in the Father and in the Son. So we see here that to be in Christ is to be in the Spirit and it's to be in the Father. All three are in you. And that's biblical Christianity. That's what keeps the church together. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And, and, and number four, our union with Christ is from eternity, from eternity past, from before we were born, God called us. When we were in our mother's womb, God designated you and separated you. That's what he told Jeremiah. That's what he told Paul. That's what he told uh, Abraham. I'm going to give you a son, and that son will become a blessing to the whole world. That's what he told David. Your son will sit on the throne, and no one will ever take that throne for him. He's known as the son of David, Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so our union with Christ is even before we existed, we were in the mind of God. Isn't that amazing? That should serve as an encouragement to you. Even before you took your first breath, God already had you in his mind. Hallelujah. And Ephesians 1, 3 to 4, it's uh, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, one of my favorite verses in Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord G Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So we have, through the Father and Jesus Christ, every blessing in Christ, but they are located in spiritual places. They are located in heavenly places. They're not located here on earthly places. They are located in spiritual 
or heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. In in other words, before you were born, he chose you in the same way. Every blessing that you need is already yours. Where? I don't see it. Go into the heavenlies. Get into the heavenlies. Worship God. Bow before him. Cry out to him. And he will give you. Why? Because what he gives, uh, he gives it so that you could be holy and blameless before him in love. God gives gifts in love. Praise the Lord. And not only eternity past, but also to eternity future. You mean my future is settled already? Yes. Romans 8, 38 through 39. One of my favorite verses of all time. For I am persuaded, I am sure, I am certain that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor heights nor depth, nor anything else in creation. He says anything that's been created can never separate you will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing that the devil can fabricate can separate you from God. Nothing that you have in your pocket, nothing that you have in your home, nothing that you have can separate you from the love of God. God's love towards you is cemented. He chose you from the foundations of the world and he chose you to serve him, to be at one with him. And there isn't anything that the devil can fabricate that could ever successfully separate you you have a will and if you choose Jesus Christ there isn't any bomb there isn't any attack of the devil there are no spiritual bullets that the devil could use there's no silver bullets that he could kill you with because even if he were to kill you you are to rise again we are the people of the rising and so we are united in God we are united in the Son we are united in the Spirit my friends circle of Christ Church um, put put me back on put me just there yeah put me back on there there you go my friends Circle of Christ Church is living out prophecy. The Lord is ministering to us. He has called us to experience a revival. And it's not a revival of of hocus pocus and noise. No, it's a revival of people finding their calling and fulfilling their call in Jesus Christ. We're going to prepare people. We're going to teach them the word of God. And we're going to teach them how to minister. Why? Because God God has given us that calling, that mantle, that anointing is upon your pastor and he's calling me to do it and I'm getting phone calls inviting me, join us with this, can we join up with you in this and people have been, I don't know if you noticed but in the last two years, the last two to three years, God has brought one, two, three, four, four pastors, four pastors who don't have congregations at the present time. God brought them to us. Why do you think he brought us those pastors? It's not for them to sit down and do nothing. It's for them to help me build your lives. And more and more, we needed a time of getting to know because we don't do things quickly. We don't do, do, we don't do things hastily is the better word, not quickly. We don't do things hastily. We don't do things suddenly. We wait on God, and God is showing us. Pastor Rick preached a wonderful sermon. Pastor Pastor Rafael Santiago, wonderful sermon, ministry. Pastors Alina and Pastor Jean have been helping us for years in the Spanish work. Now they're going to be once or twice a month on on Tuesday nights right from their house ministering to us they've opened doors to an orphanage in the Dominican Republic we have now adopted that orphanage and now we're giving out why has God brought these people to us to put them to work and to build you my friend to build you up so that you can find your calling in God we are united with Christ We do more with Jesus than separated from Jesus. And we do more together than apart. Whatever's separating us, whether it's our ego, whether it's an offense, Jesus says, and he prophesied, 
that an offense was coming. That's what he said. There's an offense coming. And because we've heard it from God, we should be alert. So what should we do when someone offends us? We should smile. Oh, so that was, that's what Jesus is talking about. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, okay. I know what to do with offense. I know how to pray and I know how to love. I'm going to love whoever offends me. I don't care if they offend me morning, noon, and night. I'm going to love on them. Why? Because Jesus forewarned me that an offense was coming that would separate us. No, God is into uniting us. When we go to the last chapter of the book, uh, uh, the second to last chapter, rather, chapter 21 of the book of Revelation, when you go to the second to last chapter of the book of Revelation, it says, and he begins to see a, a, a new city, a new heaven, and the old heaven and the whole earth passed away. They're destroyed, they're taken away, but a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem is coming together. And what are they doing? They're becoming one. Right now, heaven and earth is separated by a chasm because of sin in this world, because the God of this world is deceiving people and because some Christians are asleep, other Christians are battling. We ought to pray that heaven comes down to earth. When, when, when God spoke to Adam, Adam didn't go to heaven. Heaven came to Adam. He walked in the midst of the garden. And in the cool of the day, they spoke. And God gave him instructions to multiply, to name the animals, to take his wife with him and multiply and have children, become families, and eat of all the trees except that one. And you see, heaven was right here on earth. What was heaven? The Garden of Eden. God abided in that garden, and he walked there and talked to Adam every day. It wasn't until sin came that they realized there was, they were naked and they hid from God. And God cast them out of the Garden of Eden and put an angel before the tree of life so that they would never eat from that, so that they could be candidates for redemption. God is into uniting us back together again. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and that new heaven and new earth are going to be together. And we're going to be together with the Father. And we're going to be together with the Son. And we're going to be together with the Spirit. And we're going to be together with the New Jerusalem. And earth and heaven are going to be together. And God will be all, in all, and through all, and for us all. That's the end of the story. That's as far as Revelation has taken us. But that is God's direction. So when you feel a pull to leave, when you feel a pull, I'm not talking to that brother no more. When you feel a pull that says, oh, you know, don't forgive him, you know, get even. That's of the devil. That's the devil speaking. Don't listen to the devil. Don't listen to him. Everything that unites us is the work of the Holy Spirit. We are united with Christ. We're united with Christ. We're united with the Father. We're united with the Father. We're united with the Spirit. We're united with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. We're united with the church of Jesus Christ. If we are united with the church of Jesus Christ, then we are a force to be reckoned with. We are a power to be respected. We will have to be taken into consideration. And we won't have to go to the world. The world will come to us and say, help us and that's what we've heard in the last few weeks the world has been calling us and saying help us and we're saying yes lord you've opened doors for your light to shine with every head bow and every eye closed a little shorter message today a little shorter service today maybe because my body's a little tired but maybe that's all we needed to hear today maybe we complicated by going too long. Let's focus. Respond to the call of God. 
respond to the call of God. God's been knocking on the doors of your heart. You should be teaching Zoom classes. Learn how to do Google Meet. It's really easy. All you have to do is have a Gmail address. Most people have Gmail address. Once you have a Gmail address and you have Google search, you have everything you need for a Google Meet. You set an hour and you put it together and you could have prayer meetings with five or six sisters, five or six brothers, and you can have Bible studies. And, and, and all you have to do is ask us. I just bought curriculums for Pastor Raul in Spanish. Pastor Raul is stacked. He is stacked, man. He's got commentaries. He's got curriculums. He's stacked. And I'm expecting, I'm expecting that he's going to blow up in God. He's going to fly in God. He's going to be a blessing to the Spanish-speaking folks in our church. With Pastor Rafael, with Pastor Alina, with Pastor Jean. Yes. And here on the English side, Elder Jay, Elder Nancy, Brother Gary, Elder Larry. Come on, folks. We need more. We need more. We need to ordain some more elders. Why? Because there's work to do. There's work to do, Sister Maribel. Come on, Sister Myrna. Come on. Come on. We need teachers. We need counselors. We need preachers. We need prayer warriors. Get up from your nest and shake it off and say, Here am I, O Lord. Here am I. Here am I, O oh Lord. Here am I, O oh Lord. Here I am. I give all myself to you. Here I am Here I am Lord Here I am Let your spirit dwell in me Here I am Here I am Lord Here I am I give all myself to you Here I am Here I am Lord Here I am Let your spirit dwell in me Señor, yo me entrego a ti, Jehová, heme aquí, aquí estoy, Señor, aquí estoy. Que tu Espíritu reine en mí, aquí estoy. If you're within the earshot of my voice, if you're listening right now, or if you're listening during the YouTube, 
No matter what hour, what day it is, God is knocking on the door of your heart and he's calling you to serve him. There's something that you could do that will help build the kingdom of God on this earth. Thy will be done. That's the prayer. On earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Open your hearts to serve the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Receive Jesus. And if you need counseling, if you need help, just write to us right there on that page. You can write to us through, through the commentary on Facebook or through the commentary um, on Facebook. You can actually write a message to the church. And uh, on YouTube, you can write a commentary to this YouTube page. And sooner or later, one of the officers are going to read it. They're going to pray for you. And God's going to answer your prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Esther. Praise the Lord. Monday night, prayer time with the leaders. Tuesday morning, our next time on Facebook Live. God bless you. God keep you. Have a blessed Sunday. Thank you.